a global criminal conspiracy, a prince, a jailed socialite, and a billionaire who may or may not have been murdered. Welcome to the world of the Jeffrey Epstein, the Prince and the Pervert podcast. Journalists Lisa and Jen bring you the ultimate deep dive. Hello, welcome to the Prince and the Pervert podcast. My name is Lisa Tate. Borada, I'm Jen Tarrant. So, what's happening today, Jen? What are you up to? I noticed there were some perverts in your backyard. I don't know. It looked like Santa was running around. Santa and an inmate in a red jumpsuit? Festive wear. I think that's the prison's Christmas garb they give the prisoners. Well, look, if any of you are on social media, you might see we did another photo shoot with Jelaine Maxwell, the phenomenally successful voice that Jen has and the impersonation. What would you like to say about this in your Jelaine voice? Oh, it was rather hot doing that photo shoot, darlings. I really need to renegotiate my award with you. Now, Santa, he was a bit naughty. He was humping me. Yes, absolutely dreadful. So if you want some lowbrow humour, we will roll the videos out today, later today. Put them on YouTube, put them on Instagram, whatever. All of you be on the outlook for a woman in a 70s style red prison jumpsuit. With a nice zip down the front. And a camel toe that you manufactured purposely. Yes. And a dirty Santa that looks like Prince Andrew. Dirty. Right. So, what have you got? Well, today I've got, is Trump going to pardon Ghislaine? Yeah. But a lot of people are weighing in on that, so I just thought I'd recount that. There's a bit of Nygaard. Yes, I saw Peter Nygaard pop up this morning. He's the Finnish-Canadian fashion designer who's facing a lot of claims of sexual misconduct. Now, it's kind of, we found a link between him and Epstein, but they also both got up to no good in the Caribbean. Oh, didn't they? Allegedly, so they say. Well, I'm going to talk about the royal family. It's quite interesting. We just brought up Randy Andy. This is an incredible story. Seriously, how thick are people? Or sorry, how thick are some people? Okay, the royals are upset by the crown and some politician in the UK, and I'll get into this in a second, he's saying that the crown on Netflix needs to come with a notification that it's drama. But don't we all know that? And I thought it was under drama in Netflix. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Jen. I am loving watching these toffs melt down over this. It's absolutely fantastic to watch. But what series are we up to with The Crown? That's four. How come it wasn't brought up earlier? How come they weren't carrying on about it earlier? Or is it just because Prince Andrew has suddenly turned up? Yes, and also Prince Charles, him and his friends are upset. Well, don't watch it. Basically, that's it. You don't like something? Turn it off. Exactly. It's like we get hater messages. You don't go into a dialogue with them, do you? No. I just tell them to go do their own podcast. Yeah, and if you don't want to listen to your Jelaine voice... I've had one DM and you had an email about the Gistane voice that I do when I'm reading the depositions, darling. Well, considering that's been downloaded about oh, well over 10,000 times... Two complaints out of 10,000 listeners. And just to let you know my position on it, and everyone's entitled to their opinion, it's just that Jen has to do it for hours. She spent weeks doing this. She doesn't get paid, and it's really hot in Australia at the moment. So if she gets by on the amusement of a Gistain voice reading that deposition, I have no problem with it. Plus, it saves a hell of a lot of time from me going, Gistain says... Sigrid says, Pag says, mm. it really cuts down the size of the file. It does, doesn't it? I'm also going to talk about a few complaints that Jelaine has. We spoke about it last week, but she has more. And then finally, 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 we have some, I suppose, a flashback from the Scotsman. They did an article following up the Maxwell family around 10 years after Robert Maxwell died. So I'll give you an update on what was said about Jelaine's life. So, Jen, do you want to start? The Independent, a website out of Ireland, so independent.ie, has a story that's headlined, Geoffrey Archer, Trump will pardon Ghislaine Maxwell, but you have to ask why. Okay, so Geoffrey Archer at the moment is on a book tour pushing his latest book. Who is he? Is he that Lord Geoffrey Archer? 
He's the writer. Yeah, the writer. The yep. spy one. So his latest book is Hidden in Plain Sight. Do you know where I know him from? I'm sorry to interrupt. Remember Bridget Jones in the first movie did that really awkward uh, speech when Mr. Tits Pervert was around? Yeah. And she said, and yours too, Lord Archer. They're not bad. Exactly. I was going to say that. Mm. So his book is out and it's published by Macmillan and it's out now for £13. Oh, that's like what? 30 bucks. 30 bucks Australian. So he's obviously doing, you know, the press circuit at the moment. He was asked the question, what will Trump get up to? I think he'll pardon Ghislaine Maxwell. All you have to ask yourself is, and is it a question I am not willing to answer? Why? And then in brackets, the Independent is written, although Maxwell is still presumed innocent, U.S. presidents have the power to pardon presumptive federal crimes, like the pardon Nixon received from Gerald Ford. But obviously, he's thrown this in because it may have even been a question given out with the book for the interview because he knows it's going to get reads. He knows it's going to be seen. Well, how's he got special insight over the rest of us? I know he was a lord in the House of Lords in the UK. Well, it goes on to say Archer, whom the New Yorker magazine described in 2001 as an English combination of Trump and Gatsby, believes that Trump won't turn up to Biden's inauguration. He will be a bad loser. That's why I love the Irish in a way, he says. Whenever I go to Lansdowne Road and we, England, win there, the crowd are not abusive when you're walking back into town. They have a chat. The Irish used to be the only team on earth who remained silent when the opposition took a kick. So he's really on the PR march at the moment. Well, as someone who's like, I don't know, 25, well, my brother's 25% Irish, I agree. As you said, he was in the House of Lords. He was in 1987, he was the then Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Oh, darling. okay, so he may have insight that we don't have. Does he know Trump? Well, he had to resign and he won £500,000 in damages from the star over allegations he had spent the night with Miss Coughlin at a London hotel. Who's Miss Coughlin? Monica Coughlin, who has been described by the Independent as a prostitute. So in 2001, he was found guilty of perjury and perverting the course of justice in a high-profile case involving forged diaries, false alibis, bribery, a mistress of eight years and a prostitute. Okay, so he's probably happy that we remember him from Bridget Jones's diary one. Rather than all this, yes. So he's weighed in on it. And a lot of people have been messaging me going, Trump's going to pardon her. We don't know. We don't know. I don't know how his mind works. This case is so weird, you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. It could happen. It may not happen. It probably won't happen. Well, what if there's a spaceship that parks on the Washington, D.C. lawn outside the Oval Office and they come and they say, we've come for Jelaine, and then she walks up a ramp and disappears into outer space? But they have to be lizard people. Because remember, oh, the lizard yeah. people are under Zorro Ranch in those extensive tunnels. Please don't. I just thought of that as an image. I, I can't get into any discussion, Jen, send, on lizard people. Send all the conspiracy theories to me, please. Don't send them to Lisa. I just won't engage. But, I love them. But that wasn't deliberate, that whole, like, lizard walking up. No, you slipped up. Yeah, I slipped up. My fault. Sorry. Okay, so that's that. Now. Nygaard? Nygaard. Yes, Peter Nygaard, as I said, he is the Finnish-Canadian fashion designer who is facing substantial, isn't he? There's over 50 females because they're adults now, but a lot of the assaults did happen to minors, some women in their 20s and 30s as well. Now, they've also been joined in a class action suit by two of his own sons, who were going dad for sexual abuse because dad forced them to have sex with a woman who's been described as a prostitute who is also paid by the Nygaard Corporation. Okay. So we're not quite sure if she's the girlfriend, if she's this, if she's that. The inner city press just published today that the Nygaard suit by his two sons for underage sex faces a motion to dismiss. So it faces a motion to dismiss. It hasn't been dismissed yet. But there's also info in this wonderful story that there's more women prepared to join the Doe's versus Nygaard. So there's already, I think, 54 from memory. The plaintiff's lawyer says he has 10 more Nygaard victims who want to sign on to be a new Jane Doe. 
Mm. And one of these victims was raped in New York. It wasn't just in the Bahamas. There were also women who were assaulted in Canada joining it. So it's Mm. Bahamas, locals, New York and Canada, plus his two sons. And also the allegations go back as far as 1978. Yes. But on his Bahamas resort, he's the guy who had the dance floor that was glass that had cameras underneath it. And he also had the fish bowl where he had real mermaid girls swimming around with mermaid tails. Mm. What a weirdo. So Jen and I were fortunate or unfortunate enough to see Lifestyles in the Rich and Famous, the Peter Nygaard episode, just before it was taken down off YouTube. So we saw this whole thing and you can't see it anymore because there was a fire. Well, they scrubbed the internet that Mm. day that we were going through. We had everything bookmarked, ready to talk about it. We were going to play the video and discuss it while we were recording the pod. It disappeared within the hour of you saying you're coming over. But luckily, I talked just as prompts for when we were talking on the podcast. And go to my Twitter. I put a link to the episode we did where we spoke about the link between Epstein and Nygaard. I also, as a prompt, took these photos, screen grabs. So I actually have them. Him walking down, my favourite, is him walking down the boulevard or whatever they call it there in LA, Marina Del Rey. And he's got a giant, the biggest bloody parrot, blue parrot on his shoulder. And he's walking two Rottweilers. And he's wearing what we call budgie smugglers, speedos, tight swimmers, and this sort of caftan arrangement. And a bird. And a bird on his shoulder. Strange man. But Nygaard, interesting case, but there's not much available on Nygaard on the internet. His crew did their job. Yes. Well, we will never take our podcast down. No. So I just want to talk quickly about this whole The Crown. I don't know if anyone's seen it. I have. And we've got some kind of culture minister in the UK demanded that Netflix make clear The Crown is fiction. Like, come on, do they still think we're peasants, that we can't read, that we don't know about creative licence? They must think we're idiots. Or suspension of reality. Oh, Oliver, you're a suck-up, I reckon. Don't you? Yep. He said it's so damaging to the royal family that viewers should be warned at the start of each episode that it's not fact. So he wants the start of every episode. It's season four, as you told me earlier. Yep. Why now? Okay, it is not communist China, Minister. You cannot do that. Idiot. (laughs) So he's saying it's beautiful production, but it needs to be entitled fiction. So anyway, there's someone here on Twitter, Carolyn dodds Pennock, who said, the culture secretary's intervention over the crown is the funniest thing I've heard in ages. It is funny, isn't it? It is. And I'm enjoying, like, I'm getting so much pleasure from watching the meltdown. It's absolutely beautiful. Because in this season, Andrew's in it. And Mm. there's the discussion about Ku Stark and... The 17-year-old. The 17-year-old. So possible inappropriate behaviour being shown by Andrew. Is that why all of a sudden they're carrying on? Oh, no, they've been on to this for a while because Megan and Harry have got a production deal with Netflix. Oh, so this is all dead catting and throwing everybody to look at naughty Harry, bad Harry. Let's ignore the alleged pedophile uncle. I've got an idea. You know I'm into activism, Jen. So I'm going to write to this guy. And if he's going to ask for that label, okay, on the Netflix show, I would like him to also write to the BBC and to make clear most of what Prince Andrew said during his interview on the BBC with Emily Maitlis was fiction. Oh, that'd be great. That's a work of fiction, Jen. Oh, that is brilliant. We must. You must. This guy, the minister, is expected to write to the streaming giant. Now, where did I get this from? I need to acknowledge them. Oh, the Daily Mail. Okay, ask for a health warning. What? Like a black box cigarette warning? What? It may cause your knickers to get in a knot. Is that the warning we're going to have? I don't even think the focus here is Prince Andrew. It's Prince Charles because it's damaging to him because he was emotionally abusive to his ex-wife. That is a fact. I don't know if you don't like seeing it come back 20 years later, but you and your family, most of them, treated her like shit. She was breeding stock. She was lied to from the start. She was compliant, young and breeding stock. Look, I feel bad for him 
because he was told to marry someone he didn't love. But he was in his 30s. She was like, I don't know, 19 when they got engaged or something. That's gross these days. I know. He should have moved out of home. So when I was 22, I had a boyfriend that was 30. But the difference between Diana and I was I'd been to university and I'd been working for a couple of years. So my 22 was a lot different to her 22, I think. Plus Lithgow gal. Yeah, exactly. That's you, life. You weren't sheltered. You weren't brought up in this beautiful little idyllic, ah, and you didn't have a title. Well, you did. I but, did. That but, fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, not one we can really share, but hell, why not? I'm sorry for the swearing. I try not to do it. Oh, we need a warning. Oh, but that's not fictional. I believe that, that that people call me that fucking bitch. Yep, okay. Anyway, look, that's all I'm going to say about them. They're ridiculous, and I love to laugh at them. It's so funny. Mm. It's really, really funny. (laughs) As if Netflix gives a dog's breakfast. It's one of their highest rating shows. It's and beautiful. all this is going to do is get more people to watch it. Well, you'll probably watch it now, won't you? Well, I'm a binger, so yes, I'll probably start and watch all the way through. And knowing you, you will like live tweet it. Yes, I do have that habit. That's what I've got. Now, my final thing, and then we'll get on to what you've got, Jen. Because I forgot to say I've got other letters. Mm. Jelaine is complaining about jail. Oh, you should see what people are saying on Twitter about this. It's hilarious. People are so funny. So when you get down in the dumps, right, and you're a little bit depressed and the world's a bit, sometimes Twitter can be brilliant. Today was one of those examples. So she can't get necessities such as soap, toothbrushes and bra, but she got a bra. This is from the Toronto Sun, so. Yeah, we know she's got a bra. We're not going to say that allegedly Lex Wexner sent her one, but, you know, she has a bra. You're using humour there. Humour. Maybe, have we got a culture minister in Australia? It sounds really like, oh, totalitarian. It's 1984. Culture minister. Mm. Yeah. I've seen those movies. I know what happens. So she's awakened every 15 minutes with a flashlight because they're fearful she may copy Epstein and kill himself. Can I tell you, Virginia Roberts was on call 24 hours a day and they'd ring her to service Andrew and his friends in the middle of the night. Sympathy, allegedly... Plus, what happens about all those people who end up living in flats or housing close by subway routes, train lines, highways, because they can't afford anything better? They'd be getting noises, loud noises, constantly through their night, and she's pissed off about a flashlight. Well, she's had such a nice life. There are parts of the inner west of Sydney that suffer. I know they've got the curfew at like 11 o'clock at night until 6 in the morning. For the flight path. Yeah, but we, I would try and do some work and we'd try and be recording some audio or some visual. We'd all constantly have to stop because we're in Marrickville mm. and we're getting dive bombed. It happens a lot. Now, also, Jelaine still has the issue of not getting her vegan meals and she's lost 25 pounds. Well, she does look so much better in her Christmas jumpsuit after losing a few pounds. I like the Toronto Sun. They say here, Maxwell has also whined that she was threatened with a 21-day quarantine unless she agreed to have two nasal swab tests sucked in. My husband sniffled on a Zoom meeting and was sent off. Really? Yeah. What's the problem? It's about safety and other people's safety. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre. And then it goes back to this PR consultant in the UK. You are as ridiculous as the Minister for Culture. Oh, is this the the, Fam- pe- the family-run thing to try and get her out on humanitarian causes? <coughs> That's a violin, by the way. Now, this is what people are saying on Twitter. Firstly, if she doesn't have soap, she'd be stinky. That's hardcore, isn't it? Yep. Can you please, you'll like this, Jen, can you please tell me what you mean by the word soap? I don't know what you say when you mean toothbrush. She constantly says things like that in the deposition. Could you please explain sex toys was one of my favourites. But then again, she did say in that deposition, I'm English, so you would have some difficulty understanding the way I communicate. Hmm. Someone said... (laughs) No, some of them are a bit mean. I'm not saying this. I'm just recording it. So don't, like, get upset. I hope she's not allowed to take a poo either. I'm not going to say the next bit. If you want it, 
It's on Twitter. Ooh, I bet she's stinky. Before it happens, remember, hashtag Maxwell did not kill herself. Now, just one more thing about our favourite Jelaine. This is a Scotsman article I mentioned earlier. And what it says is the family, they continue to pay a price. Jelaine, Maxwell's favourite, is a Manhattan socialite who was Prince Andrew's social fixer, in inverted commas, in New York, but said to be deeply unhappy because her partner appears to not want to marry her. Oh. Apparently she's her father's main apologist. She shares the penthouse with Epstein, a financier. She's said to be desperately keen to marry. What date was that again? That was 2001. Mm. Some unkindly suggest that she uses her friendship with Prince Andrew as a means to pressure Epstein. I don't know how that works. I know a prince, and if you don't marry me, you can't hang around with him. Well, that didn't work. So they also said she's extremely secretive about her affairs, and she describes herself as an internet operator. Well, she had that dodgy um, pyramid Ponzi scheme she was trying out for a while. And the imaginary daughter. That's right. Invest a little bit of money and your children will reap the benefit. Call Elaine. That's right. And it was really bad in the old days. Is it Flash website? Yeah, it looks like it. What was it? GeoCities or something? Yeah, it was bad. So that's what I have today. Last week, Preska, the judge, obviously, said that the Virgin Islands have asked for access to sealed documents from the Virginia Gruffet and Ghislaine Maxwell defamation case. Her conclusion was, this is what Preska wrote, in light of the foregoing, the US Virgin Islands motion to intervene in this case is granted. And its motion for confidential access to sealed materials is granted in part and denied in part. No later than December 10th, plaintiff Virginia Gruffet shall provide to the US Virgin Islands under seal a copy of the transcript of Jeffrey Epstein's deposition as well as the exhibits attached thereto. Love to get hold of that depot. Mm. And a list of all individuals who have previously been deposed in this case. So that'll be all the John Doe's mm. and the staff who were called in as well. Because we know there's an extensive list yep. of people who were deposed. Yes, there is. So the US Virgin Islands may use these materials solely in connection with the US Virgin Islands pending Criminal Influenced and Corrupt Organisations Act, SECO, against the estate of Jeffrey E. Epstein and several Epstein-controlled entities, as described in the US Virgin Islands SECO complaint. Counsel for the Virgin Islands shall be subject to sanctions for any unauthorised public disclosure of the identities of Epstein's victims. That's good. Wow. Cool. Separately, the court shall provide to the Virgin Islands a copy of a prior order docketed under seal explaining why the court ordered disclosure to Mr. Dershowitz <gasps> of materials mentioning him. Oh! See order dated September 9th, docket number 1113, would exclude material produced by or material or portions of material discussing a certain non-party doe with particular weighty privacy interests. So who is that? It's not Dersh, it's someone else, and Dersh is involved in hiding this doe. Weighty privacy. There's so many. Who could? Well, let's start with who it couldn't be. <laughs> well, not Dersh. Not Dersh. Because he's out. Not Juan Alessi, because that's been released. Probably not John Luke Brunel. No. Would he be representing someone who's American or someone who's, say, just plucking a, a country out of the air? British? Weighty privacy. Yep, I reckon it's Andrew. They're going to get hold of stuff that we can't see. Denise George, the Attorney General in the Virgin Islands, is going them. The SECO is fantastic. And quite frankly, they should be doing a RICO, which is the American version. Yes, we would like someone arrested, please. It's getting up to the holiday period. I would like an arrest for Christmas. And also they've just put out that they're going to subpoena. It's called an intent to subpoena. Somebody who we believed is involved in government policy, finance policy, but it's not a really well-known name in the Epstein world. Oh, he's a lawyer who does lots of mergers, acquisitions, that kind of law as well. He's Stephen P. 
Hansen. Yes. But the subpoena hasn't been uploaded yet, just the intent that they're going to serve him. So when we get hold of that, like we have with all the other subpoenas, we'll be reading it out. So there's still movement down in the Virgin Islands. Yes, exactly. All the more power to them. So that's all you have for today? Yeah. The only new thing I want to tell you is about Patreon. So can you let that woman in, please? I hope she's changed her clothes. Yeah, she was getting rather stinky. The lack of soap. Go clean your teeth with a leaf or a stick. Hello, everybody. I'm here. Yes, we know. And I wish to make a complaint. You said I just had to read the haters' names out. Why are you making me read emails now? Well, this person sent us a nice email. Don't appreciate it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. You know this. Well, I'll give you a toothbrush if you do. Toothpaste? Yes. Okay, then. This is from Bungle. I don't like you, Bungle. Bungle writes, I wish there was a way to tell you just how much I love this podcast. Hmm. But words are inadequate. The subject matter is ghastly. No, I'm not. But your sense of humour, really, while never diminishing the seriousness, lightens the mood and makes receiving the information palatable. Good job, both of you. Uh No, that should be all three. I'm involved too, you know. (laughs) P.S. I'm sure you both have the cleanest laundry as a consequence. Oh, Bungle do not like you at all. And you, Jennifer, what's this about you going to buy her a beer? Well, why not? We like people who give us positive feedback. Huh. Well, after that distasteful thing, where's my toothbrush? I have to remove it from someone. Oh, that does not sound good. (laughs) Anyway. Oh, and this other announcement. Apparently, if anybody joins Patreon between now and the next 12 days, I'm sending you a little card. (laughs) They're making me work more and more. I agreed to sign the cards for soap, so I have to wait 12 days before I can get a bar. So if you'd like a card from Jizz Stain, just join us on Patreon. Details are in the show notes. And I'm going to write, I hate you. I will. (laughs) I will. Anyway, I also hate Jenny with an E, Amber, Susan, Jean, Katrina, Andres, Donna, Rob, Amy, Susan, Gemma, Pauline, Aston, Ashton, your handwriting, Lisa. Lisa, huh, you again. Jonathan, Meredith, Nicole, Stephanie, Mary Ellen, Susan, Megan, Candace, Andreas, Pam. That's Penox. I know that creature. <laughs> oh, poor Penox. Rob, Leslie, Barbara, Gloria, Tara, Diana, Carol, Aaron, Alison, Bronwyn, Robin, Claire, Molly, Jonathan, Matt, Alison, Nicole, Stephanie, Sue, PJ, Eve, Colleen, Esther, Melissa, Tiffany, Pamela. Susan, Christina, but not Oxenberg, Georgia, Linda, Amy, Suzette, Diane, Alessandra, Darla, Beth, Jen, Wendy, Sarah, Madge, Andrea, Courtney, Nicole, Judah Boggs, Anna, Nicole with a K, Amber, another Amber. How many Ambers do you have? Oh no, they're getting like Nicole's. Peter, Montine, Tizana, Sam, Kaylin, Ellen, Catherine, Lizzie, Cindy, Brandy, Tanya, Angela, Mary Kane, and another Nicole. So I want this toothbrush stacked, thank you, and the toothpaste. That's probably the most useful thing you have ever done. Yes, it's the only time I've ever worked for something. That's true, Miss Maxwell. Now off! Goodbye. Oh, I apologise for that again. She just won't go away. Hey, but at least we give her soap. Exactly. So thank you for listening. We might see you around on Twitter. I'm Lisa Podcast. You are... Oh, really, truly? And we're also on Facebook. You'll find me on Instagram, YouTube. Oh, we've got some video of Jelene Maxwell and Handy Andy. No, Handy Andy. Randy Andy? Both. Outside our laundry. Yes, we uh, let her have a visitor. I wouldn't say conjugal visit, but it got close. (laughs) Oh, I wouldn't allow that. So thank you for listening. Thank you for all your support. And we love hearing from you. It's the best bit about it. And don't forget, jeffreyepsteinpodcast.com. Lisa puts up all the links to all the stories from all around the web so you can keep up on the latest truthful news of the Epstein case. Take care of yourselves. 
don't get into trouble unless it's subversive. And then we appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we will. So, all right. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, it's Lisa here. Do you want to help us produce the Prince and the Pervert podcast? One of our kind listeners has been asking how they can support us. So we've started a Patreon account, which not only benefits you in terms of extra content and exclusive content, it also helps us just cover our costs. At the end of the day, this is a labour of love and we're determined to follow the case until the end. These women absolutely matter. That's why we're doing this work. And we are all in this together. Details of the Patreon account are in the show notes. Thank you.